If you're going to hit the beach this holiday weekend, there's a hidden danger you need to be aware of. A rare flesh-eating bacteria is on the rise. Just last month, two people contracted necrotizing fasciitis right here in Florida. 77-year-old Carolyn Fleming died Saturday, two weeks after she cut her leg on a beach near St. Petersburg. Early last month, 12-year-old Kylie Parker contracted it when she scratched her foot in Destin. She had several surgeries and is undergoing physical therapy so she can walk again. Jacksonville University biology professor Dr. Anthony Willett joins us now. Now the CDC says there are 700 to 1100 cases recorded every year. We're going to talk about the warning signs, things you need to know. But first, I think it's important to point out it's not common, but we need to be aware of it. That's right. It's actually quite rare. The, the, the type of bacteria are common in coastal waterways, but in terms of people actually becoming infected and then for it to rise to the point of an actual disease state, such as what you were just talking about, that is very rare. Okay, so we've got to be prudent here. If you've got a cut, an open wound or something like that, should you not go in the water? Well, if you're healthy, um, chances are you'll be totally fine. And so really, our immune systems are very robust. So it's the people with weakened immune systems or with liver disease that rises the uh, levels of iron in your blood, which those bacteria just love. If you have kidney disease and if you have type 2 diabetes. So if you have those pre-existing medical conditions, and you've got some type of open cut wound, a fresh tattoo, I would recommend not going into coastal waters. Other than that, most people, me, I'll get in the, all the time. No worries. You, you mentioned coastal waters. Yes. Does that mean I don't have to worry about the beach, be more concerned about the St. John's River? Uh, well, it's, it's really these bacteria uh, will not grow in full strength ocean water. So wherever you've got rivers, streams going into the ocean, it's mixing that fresh water. So the estuaries, lagoons, bays, things like that, that's where you're going to find the highest numbers. Okay, and it's not just cuts and things like that we've got to worry about and sunbathing or swimming, but also because of climate change, we're finding that it's a problem in some marine life as well. You, told, you were telling me that, you know, if we consume Roy Oysters, it can become a problem for us. That's right, and so raw oysters, particularly Vibrio vulnificus, is the, is the bacteria we're now starting to talk about. And um, the leading cause of seafood-related deaths in the United States, 95% of the cases are from eating uh, raw oysters or shellfish that have this Vibrio vulnificus. And so they do grow to very high levels, but if you, if you cook those oysters, no worries. Uh, if they're undercooked or raw, then you can get a big load of this bacteria and you can die from uh, primary septicemia, which is when they get into your bloodstream and they, they release a lot of toxins and essentially your, your immune system ramps up and you can go into septic shock and die. Now, I know that you and your students study this uh, bacteria in your lab at, at JU, so I'm sure you got a lot of people who come up to you and say, hey, Doc, hey, Andy. Uh, I know you do a lot of studies about this. What are the questions they ask you? Yeah. One of the questions that my students often get is, aren't you afraid to work with it? And they say, no, because you know we run a, a, a modern biosafety level two lab there. Everything's safe, everybody's properly trained. But yeah, my, my students are out there, they're, they're analyzing these bacteria. Uh, one of my students recently uh, isolated 30 different Vibrio vulnificus from local waters, and through the battery of tests that she's run, it looks like none of them are pathogenic. And that's the thing, all Vibrio vulnificus are not the same. Some are pathogenic, very, very small concentration of them, and others are just out there living their life, doing their thing, would never hurt us. All right, so when do you know you have a problem? Signs and symptoms that you gotta go to the doctor. So there, there's two ways. So you can get gastroenteritis from eating raw oysters, and so if you've got abdominal cramps, uh, pains, vomiting, nausea, that type of thing, and you've eaten some type of, of, of shellfish lately, definitely go to the doctor and tell them what you've eaten. If you've been at the beach or you've been crabbing, you've, you've been shucking oysters and you've got a cut or you go in the water with a cut and, and it's unusually painful. You know, we all have scratches and we're like, oh yeah, that seems like a scratch. But if it's like, geez, I don't know, this seems a little bit more painful than normal, particularly if the pain is extending further from the, the redness area, then that is a, a sign that you definitely do not want to ignore and you should definitely get it. But, but again, largely, um, you know, people, even healthy people with, with cuts going into the water is, is typically not a problem. Well, I know in one of the cases that was in the news, the lady said it started off and it became a little discolored and then the part of her leg became really black. Is that a good sign too? Well, yeah, that's, that's, well, it's a bad sign, but it's definitely an indicative sign of what we're I didn't mean good here. in a good way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So these bacteria, they're, you know, they're, they're called flesh-eating, and there's a wide variety of bacteria that can do this, but the kind that's more common, you know, which is still uncommon, right? In Florida, the, this uh, vulnificus, what they do is they release these molecules, and they're like, kind of like our digestive enzymes in our, in our intestines. And so they degrade molecules, and they also release these molecules that cause our cells to actually uh, commit suicide. And so then you get this blackened area that gets filled with blood. And what happens is, and, then, and obviously if you've got a, a big blister, 
you know, after something like this, definitely go seek medical attention. Um, and, and what happens is uh, treatment of that, uh, if you do get this truly flesh eating, is uh, debridement of the tissue, so removing loss of the tissue. And, and if the infection has really taken hold, uh, what can happen is you, you may need an amputation. That's not uncommon when you've got flesh eating disease. All right, so be prudent. You know, clean and uh, cover any wounds you have and no raw shellfish and you should be okay.